Good morning. Good morning, my neighbors. I'm gonna get situated. It's literally the morning. I just got here, getting everything kind of set up where I need to, and hopefully we'll be welding pretty soon. It's a new day. Yesterday, I actually didn't stay that long. I didn't do a fuel pump and stuff like I said I was. I did meet up with a customer and he bought me a very important piece, which I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that. And that is this vibrant flex pipe. He wanted to go with this one because it's, you know, obviously looks badass versus the mesh style. So, I couldn't do anything with the exhaust until I had this in, and it is here. So, I need to start welding this stuff up. I am by no means a professional welder. If you guys seen some of my older videos, uh, I, was ex I was explaining, you know, I'm very, entry I'm very entry level at TIG welding. It's something I really, truly want to learn. The only thing is, I'm very limited to time on I mean, I don't TIG weld that much, so it's like the the less I do, the less I'm capable of, I guess. So, bear with me. It, it may be great, it may not be, but I guess you guys are going to find out, because like I said, I'm just going to show you everything. This is like raw content. You're going to see my failures. Hopefully this one isn't one of them. Um, the customer wants a really nice exhaust. He wants it to look visually nice because normally if this was just you know a regular build you know i would i bust out the mig weld the mig welder and just burn it up real quick it would only take me maybe maybe a half hour to complete the entire exhaust mig welding tig welding is a lot slower process very tedious you're gonna see <laughs> okay come on Listen up a little bit, you guys. Come on, we're gonna be together a long time. So real quick, before I start doing anything, I gotta pull the exhaust out of the car. He's still, somebody cut it. Oh, come on now, dog. Probably when this car had a B-series. Come on, man. Um, But I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all this heat shielding because with a three inch, it's very tight and you really Probably should take that off so you don't have any vibrating issues or rattling. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull the exhaust off. I hate doing exhaust work as far as pulling it off. Like the hangers, I always fight with them. But basically I'm taking the exhaust off because I'm gonna run the harness through here and I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole with a hole saw right here. And you need to be careful. Don't just freestyle it. Take your time. The SRS harness and all that stuff is in this general general area inside the car. I already went in there and, and lifted everything up, so it's pretty much clear. I'm just gonna drill a hole there. The cables and the harness is gonna go through there. And then usually I use this 10 millimeter, which looks like it needs to be just cleaned out because it's kind of rusty, with one of those little straps to keep it up tight against the car. And yeah, so you guys are gonna get the fun portion of it and watch me struggle with this rusty exhaust. And what sucks is I don't have my normal pry bars. I have like a, maybe a one and a half, maybe a two foot, maybe a two foot pry bar. So I'm gonna unbolt the rear section first. I think it's two twelves. And then I'll just take the mid pipe down and then take the muffler out and get that out of the way. And then probably the heat shields for sure. So I'll get you guys set up. Got my good old trusty 12 mil on the ratchet. This this stuff doesn't look too, it's crazy because the exhaust is pretty, pretty rusty. It's actually kind of nasty, but the hardware for some strange reason, but to my benefit, thank God, doesn't look that rusty. It may break, it may not. Oh, I feel like it's gonna break. I hate exhaust work. I should just use an impact, but and she broke. <laughs> 
sensational. Oh, this one's gonna break too. That was a weird break. The socket stayed on. But you can see it snapped. So that's all free. Um, I'll probably take off, maybe I'll take off the rear section first because there is a hanger up here and then there's two in the midsection. So that's not going anywhere. And then there's two in the back over here. This is probably the one that I hate the most. I hate you! Just because it's up in here, it's, it's hard to get it. But I always spray everything with WD-40, kind of help it out, make it a little bit easier. I ran to Home Depot. I ended up going with one and three quarter inch. The two inch, I just felt like was too big. I feel like this is decent enough where I could get the wire harness and both shift cables through. I already installed it into this attachment. It's literally when you buy, it's just the saw portion of it. Um, I think it was like 16 bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the drill. Put on my, my fancy safety glasses. All right, here we go. And here goes nothing. All right, uh, when drilling, you want kind of high speed and not a lot of pressure up. I've learned is the easiest. Let the, let the bit kind of do the work or the saw do the do the work for you. Woo, shit's hot. came out it's like two pieces um this was just a tiny beat this was just a tiny piece of the first portion all right apparently i have to go charge the drill that's a bummer. I think I need to just buy a new drill. This battery is already toast. All right. Got him. We f***ing got him. <laughs> Thank God it's only paper thin metal. This is, this is actually, I feel like this is thinner than a normal um, body panel. But I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like and how close I gotta clean this off. Whenever you use the hole saw, I usually just go over it with the Dremel. And then um, I don't know if anybody seen any of my older videos, I'll cut a piece of fuel line, slice it down the middle and just use that as a custom grommet. You can use that for any diameter hole you use and it protects things from chafing, whether it's wiring, shift cables, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're looking. And you can actually see how close the SRS harness is. Look at that, it's right there. So that's why I'm always saying you have to be careful, like make sure where you're drilling. And I use these bolts as a reference point to inside, I kind of like, all right, it's three inches in front of these bolts and about a half inch or so from where this stamp is in the body. And you can kind of like map out where it needs to go. Just be very careful. Um, make sure your battery is disconnected just in case you catch something. Hopefully you guys don't, but that's pretty much it. That's all I do for my shift cables, um, especially with if the car doesn't have heat. Obviously, I just go through where the heater hoses are, but this is a street car and it does have heat. So 
This is my go-to option for shift cables in wire harness. I always see a bunch of people drilling a hole down on the bottom, like lower than the battery. And some people cut a square out, like don't do that. If you're doing it, stop it. It looks horrible and it's not good for the harness. I'm sure long-term it's gonna chafe through. So I always put everything where you can't really see it. It's clean, ends up coming out through the tunnel, which is right near where the computer is gonna be. In this case, it's fuel tech, so it's not, but just cleaning, that's all. So hopefully it helps somebody out. That's all I care about is just helping out one person. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the car down and start running this beauty. This thing is just, this is one of my favorite harnesses. I'm not even gonna lie. This thing is just nice. Look at how fancy this is. Shout out K-Tune, man. Again, just awesome. Awesome product. You know how like sometimes you guys will put like a stock harness, whether it's B-Series, K-Series, and you're like, which one's a TPS? Which one's the map? Talk to me, Jesse. Say working, brother. And if you put them backwards, actually some of them will burn out a sensor um, because the pin location is different for power signal and ground. So these are nice because they're all labeled. You have TPS right here. Um, I believe these retail for $7.99 and it's, they have like a, uh, like a race. I don't remember what it was, what it was labeled. I think it was like 80 bucks more, um, but trying to keep this kind of budget friendly or save some money. And these are the harnesses we use in, in all the builds. Never had any issues with them whatsoever. All, like even, even on the ECU portion, you have auxiliary. So if you have to wire in like a fan switch, you got that option. Um, one thing that Maybe some of you won't notice, or some of you came across and were wondering. So right here, you have your ECT sensor, which is the B-Series one that usually goes on like the upper coolant housing with like an adapter fitting or something. Um, this, this plug right here, you plug it in, and then on the other end of the harness, it's open. So if you plug everything in, you think it's gonna work, it's not. You have to be cautious. Right here. This red wire that's labeled, K-Swap Temp. Hopefully you guys can see that. This needs to go to your conversion harness. There's a, I believe it's yellow wire with a green stripe, if I'm not mistaken, but it should be labeled um, coolant temp sensor. This wire needs to be connected to that conversion harness for it to work, for your gauge to work. Um, if you're having a, a temp gauge problem and it's not working and you have a K2 harness, that's most likely your issue. But once you wire that up, everything is golden. Enough babbling about the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of route this and you guys can actually see. I remember, I think it was in the red hatchback. Somebody asked me to do a video on how I route how I route the harness, so I feel like this is a perfect opportunity. So let's get to it. All right, you can kind of see. Like I said, don't pay attention to that. I'm gonna clean that up once I'm able to plug everything in. But you can see, and again, the harness isn't going down that way. It's gonna route straight across and then go down. Um, but this is just for reference there. Looks clean. And over here, I gotta throw one zip tie. You see how it's all like, kind of looking janky. I'm gonna squeeze these, pull them down, and put a zip tie about right there. But that's it for the harness. I mean, it only took me a couple minutes as far as just cleaning up that section, which is honestly the hardest part. Um, the other stuff is pretty straightforward. Plug it in. Keep that same mindset of wanting to keep it clean. And then once we get inside the car, 
I've seen nightmares inside of cars with wiring. People just think because it's inside the car, it's okay. Let's just stuff it and throw the carpet over it or whatever. I don't do that stuff. My wiring is just as clean outside and inside. No exception. I'm sorry. I can't stand when I see clean cars and underneath or inside is just crap. No, don't do that. Carry it, carry it out through the entire build, whatever project you're working on, conversion harness, all that stuff. Just keep it clean, you know? Have some pride in what you do and be able to show it off, you know? Not everybody can do that. You know, if you're building a car and your buddy's got a car and his is already together and running and you're in the process of doing yours, take the pride and do it and then showcase it. Not only from the outside, the inside, take pictures and you know, whether you're on social media, Facebook, whatever, post that stuff up. It's very motivational for people to see stuff like that. doesn't matter who it's coming from. You know, you're giving people ideas or, oh my God, he ran it that way or he did that. And it's just, it's awesome. So just a little, little thought, I guess. That's my biggest thing is just take pride in what you do. You know, it's your work of art you're doing. I can't wait for this car to start. I can't wait for this car to be done. And I might actually go buy a GoPro again. Maybe some of you remember in an older video, I had a problem with my, my uh, GoPro. I didn't format the disc and it lost the entire most important footage ever. I almost lost it at that point. Oh, you! Oh, but I think a GoPro would be pretty dope. Unless I could figure out how to mount a phone inside a car somehow. Maybe I'll look into that. Because the GoPro, I just, it makes me cringe thinking about it. Maybe they have like a suction cup that I could put that clips on the phone. And then, you know, take you guys for a ride. You know, how's the car ride? How's it handle? Um, I got to do the alignment on it once it's done. We're going to have Jamie Marsh tune the car and then pass it over to the customer and let him enjoy it. That's what I wanna do here, you know? I wanna make the customers happy and enjoy their builds and make them comfortable enough that knowing, I want them to sleep good at night knowing their car is in great hands, you know? And I wanna bring you guys great content. That's all I want. So, I got O, oh, from Nice Ones coming back. He's the one that's helping me with some of the content to bring to you guys to try to take this channel. Not even gonna say the next level. I'm gonna try to take this channel 10 more levels. I wanna be different. I wanna do things different. And when I say that, it's not different than everybody else. Everybody can do their own thing. I wanna be different than kind of my channel was previously. It's still gonna be like the vlogging style and, and builds and stuff like that. But we gotta throw some, gotta sprinkle a little, a little something on top of it. Mink, mink, mink. Drop the, the uh, sway bar so I can put the harness up and maybe just put two bolts in the header. Kind of get a gist of where, where stuff's gonna be. I already pulled out the two studs that come factory. Uh, the way that I do that is I just use two 14 nuts. I put one backwards, screw it on, put one on the proper way, tighten those two together, and then use it as like a bolt. And it will just come right out. Instead of, I've, I've learned the long, I've learned the hard way that vice grips, stud extractors, it's all crap. It doesn't work. It's hit or miss. I can't take that risk because once it's done, it's done. The two bolt method always worked for me, always. Like the worst ones to take out are like these studs here. 17 mils, they never wanna come out ever. Two bolt method always works. So again, I'm gonna be able to show you guys on with that transmission, how I do it. Little tricks of the trade. I'm gonna go ahead and get that header kind of mocked up a little bit. Just so I can see, hopefully it is a 2-0. So I hope it doesn't hang too, too low. The 2-0 hangs too low. I watched that. Oh! 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 
um, because the 2.4 has a taller deck height. I believe it's almost like a, somewhere around a half inch, which is pretty big um, when you're doing like exhaust work or anything like that. Like it's gonna make a difference. So I was, I'm curious to see how it sits. I know it's gonna be good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get that on. Just tell me shut up. Just, I can hear it already. Just shut up, j -Lock. get back to work. Shut up, shut up, bro, shut up, bro. All right, so I put the car down, got the harness all up in there. All I had to do was just move some plugs around and then basically just sits up in there and then this is gonna get tied around. I'm gonna put a grommet here and I might wrap this in heat tape just as extra precaution. And then the cables as well are gonna run and then go in through there, so. I'm going to try and attempt, I don't know what angle is good for you guys. I'm going to try to put the header through the bottom, which is... So he's got new hardware, got some stainless stuff. And he's also got a brand new OEM from Honda. Exhaust manifold gasket. On the K-Series, the gaskets do only go on one way, so be cautious of that. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I might have to just put it through the top. So much trying to get the gasket with the bolt and get the header up in there. Top. You gotta kinda like sneak the header, bring the car low enough, put the header under and be able to reach the top and pull it up. It's just too much, too tight, trying to get it through the bottom. So 